Is glyconic acid good for Indian skin? Are EHAs even worth using? And a question that I'm asked all the time, can I use glyconic peels at home? Hi, I'm Dr. Anindita Sarkar, MBBS and aesthetic physician, and I have been in practice for the last 18 years. Whenever I do a consultation, it is very important for me to understand what the client needs and to form for them a skincare routine that they can easily comply with. And in this video, we will talk about AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids, their formulations, their combinations, their side effects, and most importantly, dermatologist approved brands, which have important uh, AHAs as ingredients. AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids are naturally occurring acids. The commonest AHAs that are found in the skincare industry are glycolic acid, lactic acid, malic acid, mendelic acid. And like example, the glyconic acid comes from sugarcane, lactic acid comes from dairy and fermented vegetables, malic acid comes from apples, mendelic acid comes from bitter almonds, and so on. So these are completely natural and they are used extensively in skincare products. The key difference between these AHs is their source and their potency. I will be recommending five products containing AHAs towards the end of this video, so keep watching. AHAs primarily work by working on the top layer of the skin, dissolving it and giving us a gentle exfoliation, thereby promoting collagen and cell renewal. AHAs can be recommended to improve uneven skin tone, minimize texture issues like open pores, fine lines, as well as give a refreshed, brighter skin. AHAs work by softening and loosening the upper dead layers of the skin, thereby stripping the dry, damaged layers and exposing the fresh, new layer from inside. By and large, AHAs are suitable for all skin types. However, there are certain skin types which can benefit more with the use of AHAs like oily, acne-prone skin or skin that is showing early signs of aging. However, for people with very sensitive or dry skin, I would recommend the use of AHAs with caution or use AHAs in smaller concentrations. It is very important to note though that whatever knowledge I'm sharing here is very general and if you have any specific concerns about your skin type, please get back to me with questions and I'll be happy to reply to you on what would be the ideal AHA for you to use. I will now speak, go into a little bit of a detail about the different AHAs that are used in the skincare industry. The commonest ones are glyconic acid, mandelic acid and the lactic acid. Glyconic acid is very useful for oily, open pore skin. Lactic acid is used for skin which requires a little bit of a brightening and softening. Whereas mandelic acid, also like glycolic acid, is very useful for oily, acne-prone skin. AHAs are used in various forms in cleansers, toners, serums, creams, and as night peels. When I make a skincare regime for my clients, I always keep in mind the concentrations of the AHAs in these different formulations. You can find AHAs in different formulations. As I already said, like you can you find them in cleansers, in toners, in serums, on spot applications, and in creams as well as night peels. The concentration of AHAs used in the skin cares are very important. For example, glyconic acid in concentrations of higher than 10% tend to become light peeling agents and should be used infrequently like maybe twice a week or thrice a week depending on how sensitive your skin is. Glyconic acid formulations can vary between 5% to 20 to 30%. However, as a doctor, I would advise you to meet your dermatologist for using products above 15% and the correct way to use them. Lactic and mandelic acid are milder AHAs as compared to glycolic acid and their concentrations can vary and can go up to slightly higher in OTC products. A 10% concentration of mandelic acid can be a good option for people with sensitive skin as an alternative to glycolic acid. Lactic acids can be used in concentrations of up to 10% for face. Concentrations of 15% and beyond are usually used for the body in dry skin conditions. Although as discussed, AHAs are generally safe for use. However, if you're using OTC products which are not backed by your dermatologist, it can lead to redness, increased sensitivity, dryness, and flaking of your skin. 
before we dive into the multiple AHA combinations, I want to tell you that we have done deep dives on all the skincare ingredients, some of which I will be mentioning next. And you can check on the right hand corner of the video for the playlist. So I get a lot of people coming to me with irritated, flared up skin. And on a detailed consultation, I realized they've been using OTC products with a lot of actives. The problem is not really in the products. The problem is understanding the combinations that they are using. So for example, I would like to say AHA pairs up very well with BHA in cases of acne prone skin to unclog PE pores, but AHA pairs up very, very poorly with retinol, which can lead to extremely irritated and aggravated skin. These are my recommendations if you want to start incorporating AHAs into your skincare routine. The Mandifix Foaming Cleanser for people with oily, acne prone skin. The Cosarex AHA BHA Clarifying Toner for people prone to whiteheads, blackheads and clogged pores. And the FCL Alpha Beta Acne Gel as nighttime application on active acne. But please remember to complete your regime by using a barrier repair moisturizer and to sunblock the following morning to get the best out of your AHA protocols. You'll find the links to all the products that I've mentioned in the description below. So don't forget to check that out. And not just that, due to the heavy demand by our followers, we have created a whole playlist based on our ingredient cheat sheet. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon.